Welcome to Live in the Messiah's Love. I'm Kimisha Lucier, one of the senior pastors of A Day of Prayer. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so glad that you're here. Today, we're going to kind of follow on from last week's podcast, talking about resisting the spirit of the age and being able to stand in the last days. This week, I really want to talk about subtlety. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says this, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Last week, we talked about the spirit of the age, which is really um, closely related. You know, it's, it's the devil. It's the the spirit of the Antichrist, which is already in the world. And it's contrary to the things of God. And I'm connecting this and, and speaking with you today about subtlety because the adversary, as he's coming to um, steal, kill and destroy, is not coming with blatant obviousness. He's coming in a subtle way. And, and just like we talked about the spirit of the age where you're starting to see cultures from around the world march to the same beat, even though there's really no connection that they have. Um, you know, tribes in Africa who barely have Internet are looking the same way as as um, people in Asia. They're doing the exact same things as people in America and as people in Australia, as people in Canada. They're all starting to beat, uh, walk to the same beat and move to this this voice that's in the world. And you might blow it off and, and you know, dismiss it as, well, it's just technology and they're watching it. But I just, you know, I challenge you with no, that's the spirit of the age. It may be coming through technology as a vehicle, but it's not technology in and of itself because it, it's neither here nor there. But the spirit of the age, the spirit of the Antichrist and the devil, which are the same, you know, roughly the same thing. There's no need to split hairs on that. But that is coming to move people against the Lord. Now, We brought up Romans chapter 12, verse two, do not be conformed to this world, which is a common scripture that we hear in church. But when we often think about it as coming away from blatant sin to follow God. But I want to bring something to your attention that, you know, the Lord has been ministering to me about and is that the adversary is coming in subtleties at this time to woo the body of Christ away from who we are and to get us to not pay attention to the times and the seasons. So that way we miss the coming of the Lord. I mentioned that in last week's podcast, because that's the whole kit and caboodle, right? Us being able to not not miss Christ. He is returning. He is coming back. And whether it's today or it's in a hundred years, that's neither here nor there. That's none of our business. Our job is to be ready for him. Romans chapter 13 verses 11 through 14 says this, and do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than we first believed than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light and let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. We talked about the the spirit of the Antichrist or the spirit of the age that is trying to lull the people of the world, but in particular, the body of Christ to sleep. Matthew 24, 24 tells us that, that even if it's possible, even the elect would be deceived when the Antichrist came. How can that be possible? It only happens because there's a lack of awareness. There's a lack of astute attention to the things that the Holy Spirit is saying. And there's a more that that elect person has been more finely tuned into the things of the world. You know, I was talking with someone this weekend and they had questions, you know, about this, this very concept. And it was, it was kind of a, um, a disposition like, well, they said it's the end of times since the Bible was written. And people have been saying that for years. And I, you know, I I countered that with this right here, whether it's my end of days or your end of days, or it's the end of the end of days and Christ is returning. Does it really matter? If Christ is calling out to us and saying, hey, pay attention, look at this, be wise, hear my voice, tune out the world and tune into me. 
then that means that we should pay attention because the Holy Spirit is not, not wasting his breath. He's not speaking for no reason. He's speaking because it matters. And when we put off Christ's return with that kind of mindset, well, they said that a long time ago. They said that a long time ago. They said that when the Bible was written over 2000 years ago and he hasn't returned yet. When we have that mentality, it makes our senses dull. And it causes us to um, not walk circumspectly like we're supposed to and to put off the restraint that we should have and focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when Noah was building the ark, which is uh, a funny thought, it took about 100 years to build that boat. And I know the people that watched him day after day, they, they took one or two options. They said, ha, ha, ha. He's been building that boat a long time. Nothing's going to happen. I don't even know what you're talking about, Noah. And then some took the option and said, you building that boat? Something's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I'm on that boat. Well, if you go back and read the, the scriptures, you go back and read Genesis, you'll find out that just Noah and his, his family and the spouses of his children were the ones to get on that boat. Why? Because although all the whole world saw what was happening, some made their choice to cast off and to dismiss the urgency of the day. And some chose to take heed, even though it took 100 years. Think about that for a moment. From, from the time that you've been on the earth, if you spend any time around, um, you know, church or things like that, you've heard, be ready, Jesus is going to return. And you might say to yourself, well, they said he was coming back in the 80s. They said he was coming back in the 90s. They said he was coming back in the 2000s. <laughs> and here we are, you know, moving into another segment of life and he still hasn't returned yet. But I'll, I'll remind you and I'll repeat this for you again, whether it's your end of days or it's the end of the day, end of days, you should be ready. I should be ready. I should treat it just like he's coming any moment now. I make my kids laugh and I tell them I used to. Um, practice because I, I lived a life of sin and I will call it rebellious wickedness because I knew better, but I, I knew who God was, not intimate relationship, but I knew enough to obey his commandments and I would still practice sin. And I would try to practice saying, Lord, forgive me fast enough that I could beat the, <laughs> the rapture. How stupid is that? <laughs> But I did it with a straight face. I was hoping God didn't come back, that the Messiah didn't come back and catch me in my sin. But that mindset is in more believers than who would like to admit it. And we have taken a perspective that we're not looking as though Jesus can come back any moment. We're going, oh, we still have time. I can, I can play with this a little bit more. I can align myself with these practices over here. I can wink at this sin and find value in what these people are saying because it satisfies my flesh. I'm going to read uh, Ephesians chapter five to you. This is verses eight through 17. It says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfaithful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit. Now, that last verse, do not be drunk with wine. You know, we're thinking of just literal intoxication. But I, I want to tell you that that expands to more. That really just means having dulled senses. That means being lackadaisical, being slothful and having a mental stupor and a spiritual stupor that does not recognize the times and seasons that are going on around you. You just take a look at... Um, you know, it, it's easy to, to when you think of like current events or political things, you want to go, OK, that's that's a natural realm. But when you look back, understand there it is either operating by the spirit of God or it's operating by the spirit of the devil. 
And if you align yourself with it, if you go, well, that's a a little sin's just okay. And well, I'll just put the border right there. Before you know it, you have um, seared yourself with a hot iron and you've dulled your senses so that you ignore what is happening in the spiritual realm. You ignore what your Holy Father and the Holy Spirit is saying to you that is helping you to be prepared for his return because that's Holy Spirit's job. He's here to make sure that we are seen into the kingdom of God to receive that well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now he doesn't overpower us to do that. It is our choice to let him work those things, to work that righteousness in us and to purify and sanctify ourselves uh, willingly as he gives us um, utterance to do so, as he prompts us and moves us to do that. But without your cooperation, he's not going to take over for you. Ephesians chapter four, verse 14, 14 says this, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. When I was having that conversation with a believer over the weekend, um, part of it related around just things that are happening in the natural world. And it was hard for the believer to see that it's not about the natural things that you see in front of your eyes. It's about what's unseen because the unseen world, the spiritual realm is what's actually real. This natural realm is going to fade away. And so I, I encouraged and admonished that believer to remember that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and wicked places. And because of that, you can see people all around the world who have physically nothing in common, nothing connecting them, but the same product is coming forth. The same fruit is here and there and there and there. And it even actually has the same voice to it. They're saying similar words. It's because of the spirit of the age. In, and if it's on the God side of things, it's because the Holy Spirit is ministering in them. And that's not something we should ignore. It's not something we should dismiss and go, oh, well, that's just a coincidence that that just happened um, out of nowhere. You know, that that's an impossibility because we know our father is very intentional in everything that he does. And we know that the spirit of the age, the spirit of the Antichrist, um, the ruler of this, the wicked ruler of this world has a motivation as well. And we are not to be caught up in that. We are not to walk alongside um, sinful things. We're not to agree with that. You know, you look at the decisions that you're making, look at the people that you're aligning yourself with, look at the belief systems that you're aligning yourself with. Do they honor God or do they reject him? And then remember, Christ will be here (laughs) before you know it. And like I said, whether it's Christ returning in the clouds and it's time for the rapture and it's the end of days in that regard, or it's your end of days, it's your last, you know, the last moments you have on earth, those should be spent. I hope they will be spent walking in alignment with God because the day is not promised to us. Yes, the Lord has given us long life and he promised to uphold us in that, but we have a choice. And if we put off the things of God, we put off believing him. um, And we forget that there is an adversary who comes to steal, kill and destroy. We may not see that. It's not the Lord's will, but it's our choice. So not acting as though we have all day, we (laughs) the, the quote unquote, all day long to get things together with the Lord to repent of sin and to to correct the direction of our lives, to make sure that we are honoring God and all that we do to make sure that we are being circumspect. We are being sober minded. We are being watchful that we're fully awake, not woke, but fully awake to the things of God. And we're focused and tuned in to the things of God that we're not being, um, lulled into a sense of sleep and a stupor by the world around us. Christ is returning. And he is coming soon and he is looking for people who will do his will. And he's looking for people who would do his will, not just a little here and a little there, but exclusively above their own will. Will he find faith in the earth? I hope so. And it's our job to move towards him every day. We may not capture it all today. We may not, um, you know, finish the race or the course right now or achieve everything today. But we can start with one thing. We can start with two things. We can start with moving towards God and moving in line with him in any way that we can so that he is pleased and honored by what we do, what we do. 
Well, I hope that blessed your life today. I hope you got something from the word. Take a moment and share this podcast with someone else um, and give me some feedback. Let me know if the word is blessing you or if you have questions about things. I love questions and I'm certainly not afraid to answer. So thank you for joining me. God bless you. And remember to live your life in the Messiah's love. God bless you. Mm -hmm.